Corey, thank you so much for your time. Congratulations on the series. Thank you, Manny. Good to meet you. Yeah, likewise, I'm such a fan of, of, uh, of Kaijus and Godzilla forever. So to kind of take a step back and look at the background and look at Monarch from a different perspective is very exciting. Uh, in putting the series together, what were some of the conversations and what uh, you guys wanted to check off for fans for uh, expanding this universe? I think we had a really exciting opportunity here. Um, you know, Monarch is an organization in the features that we see sort of grow in the background to so suddenly becoming more prominent in the more recent features. And being able to look back and see, how did that come to be? And who was behind it all? <laughs> I think it's something that we had a lot of fun with. But we're also doing it in a way, because you're coming in on the ground floor, you know, we're really there for new audiences as well. You don't need to know anything about the MonsterVerse to step into our show, but I think a lot of people find themselves um, delighted by their own, you know, new connections, as it were, with, with the monsters because there's such a juicy human story to follow, and then the, we have the monsters populating in such an organic and grounded way. What were, uh, what were some also um, maybe, how did you guys decide to balance the amount we see the monster versus following, following this group of characters? I think that you know having the the luxury of having ten hours of storytelling being TV, we were able to um, step outside of you know the very spectacle oriented feature film, which they do so incredibly well, and really spend time with the characters. But also, these characters live in a world where you know the reality is a new reality. We always say that it's sort of nine twelve in our show. It's the day that after Godzilla has destroyed San Francisco, and monsters are real in this world, and that's new news. And, and I think that seeing that reality and seeing that impact on them, seeing how they're reacting to their new world and knowing that the monsters are going to keep on showing up because that's the world they live in, I think keeps audiences on their toes. Um, and we have so much fun with it. How, how much time did you guys spend in, in chemistry reads and making sure that this cast was really, uh, really click because we see them throughout the, throughout the series uh, really having to interact with each other in different phases, different parts, and their uh, different emotional levels, and uh, and things change. I don't want to give anything away, but uh, it, it's been it was great to see them, you know, at their highs and at their lows, but also having to interact with so many different people. We were able to do some chemistry reads, but honestly, what was so great is is you know the magic that oftentimes happens with actors on set is they generally built real friendships among themselves. I was just talking to one of our actors yesterday who had dinner with his, you know his um, on-set family um, you know, last week. And they're, they really do connect. And I think that you feel that on screen. They, really, they generally have um, a strong connection with each other on camera and off camera. You talked about you know, this is a world where now monsters exist, where everybody's uh, uh, aware of this. What is so attractive about a world like this that we keep coming back to it? I mean, I think we're almost reaching seven years since Godzilla. And now more than ever, you know, we're, stabbed, we're having the MonsterVerse, we're having another Japanese film made, we're having this series made. Uh, what keeps us coming back? Um, I think that we get to ex we have some sort of catharsis because it, it's, it's escapism entertainment. But we've always talked about how great genre oftentimes is a metaphor for, for real things going on in our world um, in a way that we don't have to necessarily interface it with in a really hard-nosed way. It gives us a little bit of distance, but we get to actually enjoy the fact that you know we talked about that Godzilla used to represent God, a nuclear power at its you know at its birth, and then we've talked about the fact that in the course of the show it was climate change, and then it was COVID. But it's always sort of represented something that we're tackling together, and there's something about you know giving it um, a face and being able to survive it at the end of the day. I think it's something that always has um, motivated humans to come back for more. Yep, and doing it all together, uh, as we see in the series. Tori, thank you so much for your time. It's such a pleasure to talk to you, and congratulations on the series. Thank you.